It's December 7th. Ryan, there are 18 days until Christmas. Well, I'm very excited for that, and I'm also excited for the show we have prepared for you today. We've got an interview with Mr. Staley. We're going to talk to some band seniors. We're going to take a look at some Cardington Lincoln basketball highlights. We have an inside peek on the NHS trip taken a few weeks ago. And Noah and I will be back with a movie review of Bohemian Rhapsody. So let's hand it off to Stella with an interview with Mr. Staley. Thanks guys. Recently I interviewed Mr. Staley. I want to find out more about one of our high school teachers. So Mr. Staley, where did you grow up? I grew up about two miles north of the Columbus <coughs> Zoo along the Scioto River, southern end of uh, Delaware County, in a uh, town that uh, our zip code would have called us Powell. Ohio. Actually, when I was growing up, it was pronounced Powell, but today it's Powell, Ohio. Well, where did you go to high school? I graduated from Buckeye Valley High School about 150 years ago. Hmm. Maybe not that much, I don't know. <clears throat> where did you go to college? I graduated from The Ohio State University. What made you want to be an English teacher? Good question. I wanted to become an English teacher really for two reasons. Uh, first of all, decided pretty early on that whatever I decided to be when I grew up, uh, I wanted to be in a position where I was serving others in some capacity. Um, and then take my, my enjoyment of reading. I guess the two sort of made sense to go together. So teach people the, uh, the liberal arts. Recently, we've interviewed some of the band seniors to ask them about their time in the marching band. Let's take a look. So, how many years have you been in band and why did you join? This is going to be my eighth year of uh, band in general, and I pretty much just joined because I already enjoyed music and my parents wanted me to, and it just seems like something really fun because my older sister was also in band. So I've been in band for seven years. My first year was in fifth grade, and I joined because it was something that I've always sang in for my church and stuff, but I loved playing piano for my aunt, and I was like, why not get into it with something else, like a trumpet or something like that. Okay. So I've been in band since fifth grade, so eight years now, and it was more of like something like everyone did when they first got into fifth grade, but I really stuck to it because I really like music, so. What is your favorite band memory? This would be like any year. My favorite band memory. Um, so this year at band camp, because um, me, Grace, and Paige, we helped Mr. Brim this year um, come up with all the paper plate awards for the kids. So it was really fun. Like thinking of all the like dumb things that the band kids have done this year. Honestly, my favorite band memory is something that happened to me just yesterday. Basically, uh, a year ago, there was an accident in where a football player hit me and destroyed my trombone during um, halftime, and it's been broken for like a year, and yesterday, just in time for the senior show, Mr. Brim fixed it for me, and I have not been happier. Uh, my favorite band memory is probably this whole year just because it's my last year and the underclassmen and well the whole band has been great and everything that they do and it, they've made this year awesome so I'm proud of that. What was your favorite show this year and why? Uh, my favorite show was the senior show just because we got to pick all of the songs we've loved the past four years so like my favorite was Batman because that was my first song ever in marching band and um, I also, uh, me and Grace and Katie all love Big Noise because it's our favorite dance tune, so that was my favorite. Definitely my favorite show of the year is our Girl Power Show because not only did I have a solo, but it was charted by my friend Katie and she did a really good job and the songs were just awesome in it and I think the band did it very well. My favorite show was the Girl Power Show because um, it was also, the music was all really like modern and hip, which we haven't really done. 
And I also helped chart the show. <laughs> of all the instruments you could have chosen, why did you pick the trombone? Honestly, I can't remember why. It just seemed like something fun, and uh, I wanted to play the flute, and Mr. Dinozio told me I couldn't, so I picked trombone instead. Alright, so I actually started off with a trumpet in fifth grade, and in fifth grade I didn't even want to play a trumpet. I wanted to play the flute, and my parents gave me a trumpet, and that's what I played. <laughs> and so then in eighth grade, Rem switched me over to mellophone, and I've loved it since. I picked the trumpet because, um, a lot of my family members have also played trumpet, like both my grandpa my grandparents and my uncle, they all play trumpet and it's just kind of like a family tradition to play trumpet. Alright, and the final question is, what does band mean to you? So band is just um, a fun place where a bunch of kids who play all sorts of instruments can get together and just make music and rock out. Band means to me having another family, like outside of my real family and sports family. And it's just something else to go out and do and love, and most people don't get the opportunity to do that or feel that way about a opportunity or feel that way about a band or a community like that. Band to me is like a family, and I know that that's a cheesy response, but there's a joke going around in the band, and kids actually call me dad. So it's just like to me, it's just a big group of my closest friends and family, and it's just a good time where I can just play music and have a good time. I said have a good time. Alright, that's it. Oh, thank you. Alright, get out of here. <laughs> you get out of here! Now let's take you to Cayman Spires with a look at Cardington basketball. Here are some Varsity Boys vs Utica highlights. Here we have Logan Dobkin making a hustle play with the steal. Brandon Steckel, steal, not sports center, not top 10, falling down, middle of the floor. Dylan Goodman, to steal, forced by Danny Vaught. There's Trey Branger, does a nice little pull up he has. Danny Vaught, pass it in, with the pull up three. This is me, not so well a good shooter. Doing good with the hustle. About to get blocked by a point guard. Garrett Lake is cutting down to the dead spot to pull up. Brandon Steckel, steal by me. About to pass it to Brandon on the backside. Nice little layup by Brandy. Three pointer from Trey in the corner. Boys ended up beating Utica 41 to 30. Here we have the Varsity Girls versus East Knox. Right off the bat, we have a swap by Casey Berkey. Casey Berkey with the putback. Kinley Edwards going crazy, getting a steal. Behind the back pass to Paige Klinger. Assist to Casey Berkey. Here we have the post taken up the middle of the floor. Spin move going up. Nice strong layup by Casey Berkey. Kinley Edwards drive to the paint. Kinley Edwards Sawson, third pass to her sister, the bank three pointer. Hustle play. I think that's by Beth Hardwick. The quick fast break layup. Kinley Edwards pass to Casey Berkey. The put the put back. Beth Hardwick driving in. And the Edwards getting an elevator screen to pull up three pointer at the top of the key. The girls ended up winning by 30 points. 
Next up on PNN, I had the opportunity to go and talk to our NHS advisors, Mrs. Klinger and Mrs. Price. Can you explain NHS a little bit? The National Honor Society is a national organization that recognizes students who excel not only in scholarship, grades are only one part of the four criteria. Students also have to demonstrate exceptional leadership, service, and character, uh, and it's a way to recognize that and to continue, especially the service component. National Honor Society is something that is, as it suggests, like a nationally regulated thing, and so we have national bylaws and requirements that we adhere to, one of them being like a 3.2 GPA, and then we have to be able to establish um, the qualities of NHS based on their bylaws, which is like character and leadership and um, like your perseverance as far as your grades and academic elements. So the character and the leadership qualities are established by you when you have your daily actions and interactions with people both here and out of school because teachers and then individuals outside of school that you work with are able to create a reference sheet for you that creates a numeric average and making so then you have to average like that same 3.2 for character and leadership qualities also. Why did the NHS decide to go and visit South Dakota this year? This is all Mrs. Klinger. She came to me about this time last year, really excited, and said, we should take the kids to South Dakota. And I nodded and smiled, and in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you're crazy. Why are we going to South Dakota? And we get back, and I'm convinced Mrs. Klinger's a genius. It was a fantastic idea. Partially because I'd been there. <laughs> and if I'm going to take, like, a bunch of kids somewhere, I like to have already been there, so I'm at least right. familiar with, like, where we're going to try to go and the driving and cost and things that we can go do. Um, so partially because I had been there and I laid out like three ideas for different trips and I did like a cost comparison with them and then I presented to Mr. Petrie and said, you know, what do you think, what would the board support? Because anytime you take a major trip like that, the board has to okay it. Um, and he actually supported the South Dakota trip above the other two options because he said, going that far west is perhaps something that a lot of you may not do um, of on your own volition because it is kind of a ways out there. And um, so he thought that was the best choice as far as taking the kids somewhere that they're probably none of them have probably been to and then just being able to see the things that you can see out there. It's unlike anywhere else. Good. What all did you guys go and visit while you guys were there? Um, our first night we got to see Mount Rushmore, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, the next morning we woke up and got to go to Custer State Park, the largest state park in the nation. A uh, huge wildlife preserve there. Uh, we got to go to the Crazy Horse Memorial. Um, we got to see the Minuteman National Missile Historic Site, uh, which is a great Cold War historic site. Uh, and we got to go to the Badlands, which was absolutely amazing. We kind of hit all the big spots. Like we did Mount Rushmore on the first night. And we were able to see that both in like kind of the sunshine and then we were there late enough because it gets dark out there at 4 30 is when wow. the sun sets so we saw it with the lights on it um crazy horse the custer state park we then drove to the other side of rapid city and saw the badlands and something called the minuteman missile museum um, which is a museum about like uh, nuclear war the cold war and uh, like the united states involvement and all of that type of stuff um, so those are kind of the highlights, and then you have like regular fun stuff too, just being around Custer and going to the restaurants and basically seeing the sights when you're driving around. Would you guys ever go and visit South Dakota again or do a different trip? I would love to go back. I think it's a place that not a lot of people get to see, right. uh, and it's really interesting, but who knows? We might go somewhere else. <laughs> right now we're playing South Dakota again. In fact, I already like booked a hotel and um, have a date set and all of that stuff. Um, probably... You know, as years pass and uh, as long as we are still the NHS advisors, I want to maintain the seniors going on a trip like that. Um, something you work toward like through your junior year and then your senior year you get to go kind of have this, this kind of time together. So if we work up a different type of trip, um, like maybe go to Boston or something like that, that's kind of at our discretion and like the the kids themselves could say, well, maybe we want to go do this. Okay. Um, but for next year, that's probably our plan. What are some of you guys' favorite memories or stories that you guys had? I have to say, the first night they, we were there, it snowed, which at first we were like, oh man, the snow. But just like here, they put down road salt, and just like the deer here are attracted to salt. Apparently the buffalo are also attracted to salt. So as we drove, we got the road salt on our cars, 
and we're all licked by buffalo. The cars were covered in buffalo snot by the time we got out. Um, but for me, Mount Rushmore was just, I didn't expect to be as overwhelmed by it. You see it in pictures and think, oh, it's cool, but when you really get there, it's just absolutely breathtaking. Definitely when Mr. Mills decided to get out of the car at Custer State Park with bison <laughs> heading towards him that he apparently was unaware of. That was definitely a high point just because of everyone's reactions in my car and everybody freaking out and uh, that was fun to watch unfold. That was a high point. Um, and I think just for whatever reason, like anytime you're at Mount Rushmore, it's very awe-inspiring. And so when we were first driving up to Mount Rushmore and you're in this windy, windy road and you're going through these beautiful like mountains and the Black Hills and all this stuff, and then all of a sudden it just sort of appears and I'm like, guys, there's George, there's George! And they're like, where's George? Oh my gosh! They're like, we get to see this for free. We didn't even pay yet. Um, there's something about, like, I don't know. It's just being up there in the Black Hills and seeing Mount Rushmore. It's very breathtaking. And to have a carload of people that had never seen it before is really cool. At one point, Mr. Mills and I got out of our car because there's a huge big horn sheep. And I got, like, within 20 feet of it. And it just shows that you can get out of your car and, like, look at animals or wildlife anytime you want. And it's just so much, like... It's beautiful. It gets more relaxed and you can just kind of walk around and do whatever you want. So we went to the Badlands and the Badlands, if you've never seen it, is um, a bunch of really cool like rock formations and like being from Ohio because it's really flat. It's just like something you've never seen before. So when you know, it's just like, it's literally amazing because all you see is like, not quite mountains, but like everywhere. They're just everywhere and there's like nothing else there. We got to see a missile down on the ground and uh, they, they talked to us told us about that, how when uh, they were putting them in, they had to, they took over farmer's land and no matter, the foreman did not have any uh, choice whether or not they had to put the missile uh, on his property and he got to, he had to watch around it and make sure there was no uh, trespassing going on. Uh, when we went to Mount Rushmore, we waited until it was dark out, so we saw it when it was light and when it was dark. And it, like all the pictures, just says they don't do it justice at all. Movie review. All right, today we are be be reviewing Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, were there any like standout moments or favorite characters you had? Um, there's a scene where they first like discover like how to play Another One Bites the Dust, mm -hmm. and so the bass player like brings in all this sheet music, and they're like, "This is disco. This isn't good." But then he like plays it, and they're like, "Well, that's actually pretty cool." And then eventually they play it, and I think that that was just that's yeah. probably like, one of the coolest scenes in the movie. So yeah. The movie does really well when it's focusing on the musical aspect. And of course, I think this, you, you said before you didn't think this, I think that the second act really drags when Freddy leaves the band. The movie really drags because you don't have him to feed off of the other characters, and it's kind of just him being lonely. Mm -hmm. So, I thought that part just really wasn't that entertaining to me. It wasn't fun to watch. I mean, it wasn't entertaining. I just I just feel like it was kind of, it kind of needed to be there because it like kind of, feeds to the story. I felt more like, yeah, let's get back to the band. But maybe that's because I came for a Queen movie more than a Freddie Mercury movie. And that probably leads us into our next point, which is, if you're a person who's expecting this two and a half hour Queen concert, that's yeah. not what you're getting. This is more of a, yeah, like a, a story than it is a movie about music, which yes. I guess I kind of walked into it wanting it to be more about music than it was about Freddie and the band. And I guess it was okay, but like, you can't expect it to be about that because if you walk in that way, you're going to kind of come out disappointed. It wasn't, by any stretch of the word, a bad film, yeah. and it was definitely above average. It just wasn't as good as we all wanted it to be. Yeah. I'm going to give it like an 8. I, I think it was an 8 out of 10. I thought that was 10? pretty good. Yeah. Just a pure 8 out of 10. No yeah. percent. Yep. All right. I give it a 3 Arthur Morgans out of 5. Thanks for watching the first episode of PNN. If you'd like to watch us again, we have a new episode next week. Goodbye. Bye.